Clinicals are a huge, huge part of nursing school. But like a lot of the things that you're gonna be doing in nursing school, if you've never done it before, there's a little bit of an anxiety that just kind of comes with when you hear about it or you know when you hear people just kind of vaguely discussing about it and it just becomes this big unknown. So in this video, I'm going to kind of talk to you a little bit about you know, kind of like, you know, what to expect really in your nursing school clinicals. Hey guys, this is Thomas from Nurse Money Talk. And like I already mentioned in the intro, let's talk about clinicals, specifically your nursing school clinicals and roughly what you can expect from the whole experience. Before I get started though, if you if at the end you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos about being a nursing student and just in general nursing, nurse life. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, like clinicals are, are an interesting. Like from my experience, I had I had good clinicals, I had bad clinicals. I had good clinicals in the sense of like, I really, really enjoyed the specialty area that I was in. And I had bad clinicals because the preceptor or the nurse that I was following just wasn't very good for whatever reason. And of course, you know, you could easily just kind of, you know, flip it to where it was bad because you know, I didn't really care much about the area that I was in, or it was, you know, good because the first the person I was following was was awesome. I think there's a lot of things that can make or break your nursing your nursing school clinical experience. I think the thing to know about clinicals is that it's going to be scary at first. Honestly, I think it's probably going to be scary. You know, your first several runs into it because, because it, it almost seems like as you get so like your first one, actually, let me start here. Your first one where you, if you've never been in a hospital setting before, maybe you've never really been in a hospital or you've never worked in, in a hospital before, it can be kind of weird. You know, there's sick people or hurting people all over the place. You know, there's kind of like this high stress and adrenaline that comes from it. You know, if you're in a situation where there's a lot of tubes or monitors, you could just be like, I don't know like what to do. Like, you know, I feel like if I touch something or if I just look at something the, the wrong way, like, you know, something really bad's gonna happen. And I think for the most part, you know, those are very, gonna be very normal experiences and you are probably gonna have that those experience, you know, that nervous feeling. Something to keep in mind is that, you know, I think a lot of that will just kind of go away as you, you know, with time, as you kind of get more into the program, as you kind of get more knowledgeable about the stuff around you, and, you know, as you just kind of get more knowledgeable in general, just kind of feel more confident in what, in what you're doing. But at the same time, it almost seems like you never quite get that comfortable because like, you know, you're, you're going through a lot of different rotation sites. And so it, it almost seems like as soon as you get comfortable ish, then you're off to another, another like clinical rotation. And so, and so I feel like that a little bit of kind of like that nervousness is, is just going to be there. But the thing about it though, clinical is like, if you're the type of person that you really love working with your hands on. You really love just kind of seeing like textbook is just not enough for you. Then I think, you know, you'll, you'll probably really love clinicals, you know, so now instead of, you know, passing meds, Foley's, IV stars, you know, some of those good stuff, those, you know, those aren't just theoretical anymore. You know, now they're actually like the practical, hands-on stuff because here's the thing you can learn and be taught all these things especially the skills portion of it all day long 
And to me, like, you don't really start grasping it until you actually get down there and start doing those skills. Not saying that the, you know, the classroom teaching isn't valuable. I'm just saying that, like, really, it doesn't just, it doesn't get brought all together until you actually get to the clinicals. And I think that's what clinicals, clinicals does that it really just starts bringing and tying everything together. In a nutshell, it is a hands-on practicum. You know, you're gonna be in different specialties. You'll, you'll work in that different specialties. You'll be follow, you know, you're gonna be following a nurse um, who's kind of gonna be guiding you in those practical lessons. And so for the short time you're there, you get to kind of, you know, almost get a better idea of what a nurse really does on a day to day. While at the same time, you'll be doing a care plan, which is almost kind of like, you know, if you don't know what care plans are, <laughs> you will. Um, but it's pretty much kind of like almost like a workup of top to top and down, you know, about the, the patients, um, you know, what all the patient's issues are, and then why as well you're creating nursing diagnosis as well. So that's all of that in a nutshell, but what I actually do want to do right now is like I wrote several questions, or uh, it's probably more than several questions, and so I'm going to read and actually answer um, some of those questions. These are either questions that have been, you know, questions that I think you might have as a student, or also questions that um, that other students have either asked either through my website at nursemoneytalk.com or through email or like when I've precepted nursing students just kind of like some or people think about going to nursing just kind of like some of the questions that have been asked. As a side note, if you do have a question and I don't answer it here, then leave it in the comment section below and uh, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to it and so, you know, you can get your question answered and also, you know, anybody else that comes across this video will hopefully see it and then get, you know, get that answered as well. But the first one is, actually, I'm gonna throw how do I pass nursing school clinicals? Can I actually fail nursing school clinicals? And how are nursing school clinicals graded all in one bucket? You pretty much because, you know, how you pass is essentially how it's also graded. It's pretty much attendance, participation, how prepared you know you actually are for what you're doing and of course doing care plans or any other assignments or homeworks you might have those essentially make up with um, how you're, you're going to end up passing part of that is making sure that you show up on time um, especially if you're going to a, a facility that you've never been to before it's really really good to make sure you're there early because at times where you'll be parking and where staff, honestly, nursing staff park in general, who knows how, how long away it is from the actual um, facility. So you'll want ample, ample time to be able to park, get there. Um, being early is better than being late. So, because that will definitely cause a, a lot of issues for you. You know, participation, make sure you participate, make sure that you're, um, that you're prepared as well. So participation, you know, clinicals, if you, you know, the saying like you'll get as much out of it as you actually put into it is kind of half correct for this as well. And, and I say half because honestly, you can put in a lot of effort if you get stuck in, stuck with a nurse that just doesn't care much for students. That's going to be a damper on, on your education, on what you actually learn while you're there. But at the same time though, if you go in, put in the effort and hustle, um, uh, you know, I think more likely than not, you'll probably get a great experience. You know, if you're working hard and asking good questions, I think a lot of nurses will see that even the ones that might not care for precepting will see it and be like, okay, this, you know, this dude's, you know, he's this dude, you know, guy, or girl, whatever, you know, they're, they're hustling, they're doing whatever they're asking good questions. You know, so they'll, you know, so I think that makes a, a huge difference as well. And then, you know, you'll probably have like a huddle time or whatnot where you'll meet your clinical instructor as well, either before or after, make sure you participate in that, make sure you ask good questions. And then, of you know, obviously be prepared. That's part of that, showing up on time, doing whatever assignments you might have ahead of time. And then of course, homework, care plans, 
those are going to be a big chunk of that. So make sure that, you know, that you're actually getting those done. What are the clinical instructors like? So do your nursing school instructors and honestly, from my experience and from, you know, having precepted, uh, you know, a lot of nursing students, um, you know, work, had a lot of nursing students follow me, have talked to and interacted with a lot of uh, nur like clinical, uh, clinical instructors. I'm just gonna be honest with you, it can sometimes be a hit or miss. I think you can have like a really, really good one and you can have one that's, you know, they're, they're just there. I mean, you know, so there could be instances where like you might only see them twice, um, which would be at the beginning when you get there and then at the end. And so it's possible you might not see them, um, you know, um, at all in the middle, you know, they could be out doing their own thing, sitting out in the lobby or whatever, because I think generally speaking, they just have to, like a rep for the school just has to be there. And, and you know, and to clarify, it's, it's possible that it's not even your, your nursing, like a nursing school faculty. It could easily be a clinical adjunct, you know, like a, uh, you know, so if you look at, a job board. So if you go to, I don't know, nursemoneytalk.com forward slash jobs, and you just do like a search for like clinical um, adjunct, clinical nurse adjunct, you'll see a ton of them, uh, of those positions there. And so I think generally it's like the clinical adjuncts, the ones who aren't, it's almost kind of like the contract, if you will, staff um, that can sometimes be more of a hit or miss than the actual faculty. So I just did want to make sure to clarify that. But if you have like a really, really good one, my goodness, like the amount of information you can learn um, from them, I mean, is really, really, um, really good. So, um, so just kind of keep that in mind. What do you wear for a clinical? So generally speaking, you're gonna wear scrubs typically. Um, you'll wear whatever scrubs your facility tells you to get. Um, so it could be royal blue, it was royal blue, red, dark blue, green. I mean, it just, it, it just really depends. So you'll have to talk to your facility, uh, make sure you know what your particular, not facility, what your particular like nursing program wants. And then typically speaking, you'll have to put in like a little um, embroidered badge or something like that, either on the right or left side. And then typically then you'll have to have a uh, badge that the, the school um, wants you to have so that everybody knows like, okay, this is a nursing student. And then you may or may not have, um, you know, like other requirements as well. So for example, your program might have some things about tattoos. Um, so maybe those need to be covered up. I made a, you know, we have a video on, I have a video on that that you can check out. You see a link above. Um, they might have some stuff about, um, you know, maybe like hairstyle, um, which, you know, you'll see that above. And then also jewelry as well. You'll also see a video on that above and you'll also see it in, in the link description below of just kind of checking out those videos because different programs will have different requirements for that and so it's kind of important that you know for sure what your school's uniform requirements are because i would imagine that they probably have something also don't forget about shoes um, as well um, in terms of they might may or may not have requirements i'm not sure how many programs are now actually have like color shoe color requirements um but they might have like you know closed toe shoes and all that so they probably have will have that requirement and then obviously don't show up in sandals i think that's might be more common sense but even on top of that you'll want to make sure that you wear really comfortable shoes and so we have some articles on shoes you can check out i'll put that in the link this in the uh, descriptions below but yeah comfortable shoes because there's a good chance you'll probably be standing a lot doing a lot of walking around so you'll you know especially if you normally have like shoe issues or flat feet or you know, something of that nature, then definitely, definitely you'll want to make sure you'll have, um, you'll have shoes, uh, good shoes with you. What do you need to bring? Um, as for bringing, besides the stuff that I mentioned already, stethoscope probably is a good one, a uh, writing utensil, nursing scissors, um, 
probably something to take notes, maybe like a clipboard. My favorite though is, and I don't have it here with me right now, but like my favorite though is like the clipboard that closes where like, you know, you, it kind of doubles as a storage. You can open it up, slip, slip some stuff underneath it and then close it back up. Has of course a clip on top where you can write on it. That, I mean, it's definitely um, probably the clipboard I would recommend. I'll put a link um, you know, in the descriptions. Um, so you can definitely check, um, check, check that out and see what I'm talking about. Um, so a good pen, um, I am personally kind of a, um, I don't know if you want to say I'm a pen snob or, or what, but generally speaking, like typically I'll only use like pretty decent pens like this one, you know, this one's like a pilot pen. That's typically like my go-to, um, not, not really for any, other reason except for, you know, they're generally good quality pens, write smoothly in the whole nine yards. But, um, you know, they're not super expensive, but they're definitely not like, you know, 25 or 50 cent pens either. I think for the most part, that will probably be the big stuff. We also, I also did have an article on just kind of like what to bring um, for nursing school, you know, so you can, you'll see that in the description below. So this was one that did come up, which is what if you don't know something? So let me just tell you right out of the gate that you, you're not going to know it all. Like, so there will be things that you don't know about. And, and honestly, that's why you're there. Um, that's why you're, you know, you're, you're in clinical so you can learn. So just, you know, I would encourage you just ask good questions and make sure you're asking questions and make sure you're really taking advantage of all that experience that's around you. You know, you walk in, if you're doing like, I don't know, like an ICU clinical and you happen to see respiratory therapists there, you know, maybe they're working with a vet, you know, obviously if they're not like overly busy and something urgent that maybe just be like, Hey, you know, can you explain a little bit about what's going on with the vents for me? Um, you know, just pick the brains of, of the specialties that, you know, registered dietitian, you see them there, maybe ask them like, Hey, you know, why are you using this particular tube feed over this particular tube feed or something like that? You know, just, so just really honestly take advantage of all of those uh, specialties that are around you. The last question I'm going to cover is one that I was actually really surprised to, to see that so many people were actually asking this question, which is, do you get paid for, for clinicals in nursing school? And the answer to this is no, you don't. I mean, clinicals are just part of your education um, as well. So technically you're actually paying to go to clinicals. So you do not get paid for clinicals. You pay, um, um, you, you actually pay the facility uh, or no, you pay the school. And then I don't know what all arrangements works. Um, works with that. So those are the specific questions that I'm, um, that, you know, that I kind of want to cover for this. If you have like a bunch of questions that you have, um, that you want to ask, I mean, uh, you know, so, so let me know, like if you want like a part two made, I can definitely make a, a part two to this video. So just let me know in the comment sections below. Uh, thank you so much for, for taking the time to watch this video. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button as well. And, and if you think somebody else is going to find this video helpful, uh, please, please go ahead and, and share the video as well. Um, real quick though, over here to my left, you are going to see some other awesome videos that we have just kind of talking about nursing school, the nursing program, and even some, you know, you might even see one where we, you know, where we're talking about like how to be successful, how to pass nursing school exams. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you very soon in that next video.